Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> I got your um, your track list. So for this session, what, because we've gone through a lot of stuff. I'm curious, yep. what is it that you want to do for this time out? So I didn't really prepare something because I wasn't quite sure what you wanted to focus on for this one. Yeah, well, this was us playing the tracks back and forth. So obviously you've got the, the tracks in the drop box. Yep. And I think we were going to go a little bit back to back of how I was going to interpret a mix on the fly and then yes. how you would go through the same songs and do the yes. same thing. And then so I can look at what you're doing. Hold on one second. I'm going to actually uh, let me pull out of this this close up one because this close up one was for the last session that I just had so I can get all four decks in. Didn't get a chance to do this just yet. Okay. Yes. Let's actually shrink a little bit so you can see all four. How's that? Good. Okay, we can see all four. Yeah, okay, cool. Yep. I'm trying to see if you need me to be a little closer. Do I need to close up? No, that, that's that's fine, Roger. Cool. All righty. So um, what I was doing, because I, I had a chance. Now, here's an interesting one. So I listened to them briefly, but now I'm going to act like this is a live gig. And yep. what uh, it, it, I just, funny enough, I just had a, a session with Richard and one of the things, it's similar to what he was asking me. He sent me a playlist and was like, well, how would you transition these? So here's an interesting thing that I think you probably, you might do, but it's really useful when you've just downloaded a bunch of new tracks and you have a playlist that you're not really 100% familiar with in terms of knowing each and in each individual track. So, which is cool because what you gave me is a bunch of tracks, some of which I have, some of which I didn't, a lot of really good stuff in there. So, but I'm approaching it like, I just downloaded a bunch of tracks on Beatport, I'm at a gig, now I'm playing. Uh, the way I tend to arrange it, as I've told you before, is I put the stuff that I know I wanna, you know, I'm gonna definitely play towards the top of the list, um, and then going down in terms of likelihood of playing. So this might be, these might be in my list as towards the top, but not like the top ones tend to be the ones that I really, really know are like, okay, I know these tracks and I know what I'm, what I'm playing. So what I do is I'll jump around on these and show you how I kind of make my decisions quickly because it will change from set to set depending on what my energy is that I want to, put out on the dance floor, what the transition is, what I'm playing and what I want to transition to next. So, and I'm wondering whether you want me to kind of do the four layering, um, um, four deck layering, or maybe focus on the two, like the transition from one to the other in terms of how I would uh, do it. What do you think, Dean? No, I want you to put, put everything into it. Okay. So if I'm queuing up, so I'm just going to go to overhead for a minute. So I'm queuing up all of these tracks, right? So let me just start so, with. So that would, sorry, Roger. So that would that would be if you want to throw an acapella on, if you want to do whatever, or beat loops, or sound effect, or what. Just bring yep. everything in. I, I just wanna I wanna see it in its full capacity, if that's okay. Do you want me to use just the tracks that you've given me, or anything else on top? You can lay it whatever on top. Okay. So one of the things that I always do is, as you're kind of seeing over here, is I may not know these tracks fully, fully well, but I'm going to skip around them and I'm going to use the, uh, the breaks to kind of give me this, the cues as to where I'm going to drop what in. So I'm just quickly listening to this, my beat track. So this track has a really cool kind of just like a riff, like a real cool groove. I'm going to loop that in. So let's just say I'm going to go check out a couple other things. So I'm going to put on just a track, let's say I would be playing in the background where I'd normally just have one of my tracks that I'm playing. So let's just say I've got this one playing. Okay. 
Basically, what I was doing there. Stop this for one second. So, what I started doing first was I queued up the music is the answer a cappella over on my left one. And I, this one I was going to float pretty much the way through. The mouth to mouth, which is on the right, is a track that I know I can, I know it's got long breakdowns. It's got a, it's got a really kind of jack and groove, very, very funky. That's kind of like my centerpiece that I did. With this, the my beat i love that loop that's this group this really really cool groove it's very heavy it's very driving it's very jacking but what i was doing was using the i was using this one for its hi-hats and percussion so there's a little what that did is I added to that. I added to the. This one has a much funkier bass line, <coughs> but <clears throat> even when the, uh, the beat comes in, it's, it's pretty groovy, it's jacking. But what this had is that extra layer of like that 909. So what this one was missing was a little bit of kind of the high end, a little mid that this one has. 
And the way I've kind of kept that is I, I kept the filter kind of like at 11 o'clock. So you just get a little bit of that. Of that. But it's not conflicting with the bass line on the right one. Now this one has certain sections that it drops out. The, um, the, mouth, the mouth has long breaks in certain sections that it drops out. But because I've got the filter out on this one, I still have the high end. So if you listen to it by itself without it, it's missing some of that mid-high. Whereas when I put this in there, it's adding that dynamic. But it's not overpowering that. So now when the bass line comes in on that, you still hear the bass line on that. But the, the, high end, the high end is being layered on top. Right? I can't hear you. Sorry. Sorry. Can't hear you. No, no, that's all right. We're, I think what's happening from our end or your end, there's a, the, it, it's fine, but we're just yeah. getting that little bit of internet, internet um, breaking. Ah. It's, it, it's, very min, it's very minute. Got it. So, Got it. We'll just so keep going. what I was explaining was so this, the, uh, the Johannes, I'm using the perk and the high end of this with the bottom end filtered out with just like I've got the filter at 11 o'clock. I've got the uh, bottom end rolled out. So you're getting a little bit of that doo -doo -doo -doo, as well as the high end level. This one has got the bass line and the meat of the track. The my beat is the transition that I want to go to in terms of where it's going to go to next. And I'm using and I'm layering the acapella of music is the answer over. So as this is running, I've just layered that over on top of that. To give me a bit more dynamic high end and mid. What I've done is I've built up this dramatic tension by using all of them. I've backspun three of them while cutting, while I have the delay up, while cutting the channel on the one I'm about to bring in. Then I've added up all the bottom end, and then that's the one that I brought in as the main section loop to really change the, the dynamic of the track, of the, of the overall set at that point in time. Yeah, it seems to me that... Um... I know the big difference with what I can tell is that I've never really got into production and I can right. really see and understand how that is a different mindset from your end as to my approach because mm -hmm. you are really splitting up the instrumentation on each Correct. deck and how they're corresponding and collaborating together, which my ear is not trained in that sense because I don't well, produce. I, I can see that. See, what I would say is to train your ear differently. Production definitely really is the key in terms of how my brain understands it. <clears throat> but I think 
for me, when you're using four decks, you really are reproducing a remix. So when you think about that, especially when you're bringing in an acapella and you're layering, you want to break down each deck to a component. And for me, one of the, the simplest ways is what are the frequencies that I want to use in which track? So that's why I started off with the bass line and the main body of the track on the far right, which is the, um, the, um, the mouth to mouth Reva star remix. And I'm going to let that ride because it's got very interesting dynamic breakdowns that have builds ups and has a natural, uh, um, progression and structure that's going to allow me to play with it. And then when I want to transition into the my beat before I literally have it two bars before the very long breakdown, right? There's a long breakdown. And if you can see it on my on the my beat right after that, it's going to go to a long breakdown. That's towards the beginning first build up of the track. But I really like this. It's got this really high pitch kind of uh, a lot Jacking. like uh, yeah. tone on top, a lot of energy percussions are smacking. The good thing is, as I'm running the acapella of music is the answer in my mind, I know I want to take it to this, this is where it's going to go. So I look at it, this is my current body, this is going to become my new body, the acapella is floating over everything. So in your mind, think of breaking down each deck as what component do you want it to be? Do you want it to be a bass component? Do you want it to be a mid-range high component? Do you want it to be a vocal component? Because when you figure out what components of tracks you want to you want to add, that's when the layering becomes more seamless. Sometimes Does that make sense? Cool. So, All right. Okay. So, so did you get what, like I, was, good, what I was what I was saying before? Did you get what I, I was saying in terms of I breaking did. it down to its components? Yes, yes, I did. I, I, I caught most of that. Um, just basically what you were saying with, you know, what, what works with what, where the bass should be, um, you know, things like that. I, I caught most of that. What I think you should always do, be doing is paying attention to the EQ. So even though you're not a producer, as a, as a DJ, you know which sections of the tracks you really like and which ones kind of work. So always have in your mind when you're going to this four deck layer, which sections you want to work with to give you what so i'll give you an example let's uh let me pull up something else completely i'm going to pull up uh this track from jamaica to brazil which is uh the conga mix which i use a lot as a as a kind of like a percussion overlay i'm mean, it's pretty loud let me find so one thing I do do, Roger, is in knowing that, see, you're more on the fly, yep. and I know that my ear is not as obviously as trained as yours, so I go in the back end, and I set up cue points That's for perfect. my loops for that part, because I know yep. I'm, it speeds things up for me. Yep, no, and listen, and 100% you should do that. I'm doing this on the fly because I'm so accustomed to constantly uploading new material that I don't always get a chance to set those cue points. So whatever works, and now see, and there is no right or wrong here. It's whatever works for you. This yep. is the beauty of it. So if if you if you taking the time to set up your cue points and and your loops and your your kind of lay, laying everything out in the way that you can find it and access it quickly, that's exactly what you should be doing. What I'm doing right now is I'm improvising because I'm using stuff that I've just gotten from you and I've downloaded it last night. What I do want you to do realize is that besides the times that you have had the ability to, to kind of set your cue points, preload your mixes, if you just downloaded some new music and you're not that familiar with it, this is where after practicing and really getting tight with your, your preset, what I like to call kind of the meal prep, when you've really, you, you gotten really tight with, can you hear me? Yeah, I know I yeah. can hear you. We're getting that little, that intermittent thing again. Uh, I mean, sorry, that's, yeah, that's gotta be I'm Zoom. Not, not. Um, so yeah. um, where you're, you, when you get really familiar with your meal prep, you know, when you set up all your loops and whatever, the next phase is to be able to be confident to do things on the fly. And so what I'm gonna do today is kind of show you how I'm doing it on the fly so you can kind of see how I set it up 
So mentally, yep. you can think about how you want to preset your loops and your cues, but it gives you the kind of like the theory behind it. So right now I've pulled yep. up this um, Jamaica, Brazil, dub conga thing. Uh, I'm just going to take the, let me see what this Joy Marquez track is. I like that little loop that it's got the little vocal for me. Yeah. Hey, Roger, have you seen on those 3000s the, the beat shift feature? Yes. Which I, is, I, I haven't that's had a pretty chance. cool too. And it's really, you know what? And I'm, in all fair honesty, I haven't had a chance to really play with the BQ. And it's funny, I just had this yeah. conversation with the guys from Pioneer because they're running me. They're like, we see how you use it. Let's give you a couple of more things that you could play yeah. with. So I had, well, I had a guy, I had a guy around from a show and he just showed me, he says, oh, this beach is really cool. And I was like, you, I was like, oh, what's that? He goes, well, instead of exiting your loop and then trying to get it back in, cause you want to yeah. change it. He said, just hit this and it moves the whole thing along, yeah, which, which I thought was really cool. You could teach me something here. So, so if you look at, um, it's called beat jump. The beat jump so, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so if right. you, you know how sometimes you, you put a loop on the fly and it's got a hi hat at the end and it makes yeah. it, it'll move it along. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. So you can, you don't have to exit the loop. You just shift it. Yep. Yep. Got it. Yep. Yeah. They showed well, me I that just before. figured that out a couple weeks ago. No, and it's dope. Sorry. And it's interesting because that is actually a really good tool to jump and skip through loops once you kind of started setting loops. So yeah. I found that that section that I really, really liked, right? That's this one. That's gonna be one I'm gonna rock just kind of like as the main body. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna pick everybody be somebody. Not the Bronx loop, go vocal. Shot. So I'm going to use this, the everybody be somebody loop. Uh, and then with this, I'm going to take on shake it. It's got a little piano thing in it that I like. So now let's see what we're doing. This is my, this is my main section. And this house, I'll be building it up in the set.
Okay, so um, I'm going to have a crack now, aren't I? Is that what we're doing? Have a crack, mate. So you have, have a crack. So just right. real quick before you jump in, um, yep. what I was doing last time before before it all shut down, uh, just as a quick run through, as I was saying, I was using the uh, let me put the overhead view. I was using the the pizzolato as the main body of the of the track of the mix. The from Jamaica to Brazil was that percussive conga thing that I just let run because I just got this really cool loop with the with the uh, Moreno Pizzolato with this kind of little vocal that was going through it, which was while I was running the Everybody Be Somebody a cappella over it. And then I used the piano from Shake It as the breakdown element to give it the musicality of it. So that was just kind of what I was doing in terms of this. Cool. Cool. All right. Okay. Um, you want my overhead dinger? Yeah. Is that correct? What, what, yep. Perfect. Is that better? Is that better for you? Either one is and good. One more thing. Either one okay. is good. Before, before I start, um, I will also to do the sound can check. Just if it's too loud or too low, just let me know. I'll just do a sound yep. check. Yep. Is good, that okay? Good level. Yep. Good level. Good level. Okay. All right. Here we go. Nice. 
I see the growth there, brother. Well done. Yeah, so that timing is just coming in. Um, it, you know what's the biggest thing what I've learned is the setup and the not rushing to yes. get to the drop because that's when yes. you make all the mistakes. I think one of the things yeah, that the, go ahead, go ahead, no, go ahead, continue. Yeah, so like obviously what I was doing was uh, different again because I wasn't breaking down the mids and the trebles and the ranges as much as you, but the 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 simplification a level down from what you were doing tends to work for me, I think. Um, and I'm not forcing myself into a corner where I'm advancing too much on the fly. Yeah, I think what, what I noticed this time around compared to the previous times of you playing, um, the fact that you took your time setting yourself up, you let the groove grow in, uh, you layered the vocals in in the right, in the right section where you had room for it to breathe. That's very, very important because when we first started, sometimes you'd bring in a vocal kind of stepping on another vocal, but I knew it was kind of like just trying to catch up and rush to make the transition. So the speed that I move at and the speed that you might think would be, okay, there's all these quick cuts and transition. The speed for me is more getting the frequencies and the elements in. So you, you peg that right. I think this works great for you because exactly as you said, you don't need to try to do all the different layers. This is just how I structure it because that's the way my mind works. What you, what I've seen you pick up here is lining everything up, finding the right sections to use and also to create a drop. What I like about it is you created a couple of drops here that I know weren't part of the original tracks. And I like that. Um, yeah. Where I think you might want to take a little bit of of um, now fine tuning it is when you were doing the whores in this house loop um, watch your levels because that vocal was really overpowering at one point in time what yeah. was going on with the music so you might just want to back down on the level of it a little bit and sometimes yeah. that's yeah. you know you find yourself doing that in, in in the mix just pull it back when you see it overpowering the other thing to be careful of is when you're looping it, some of these tracks will, will slightly drift. So this is me really nitpicking. No one else would notice this probably but me. It was just, yep. it's, it, it was looping fine and then it was slightly like speeding up a little bit. So it was slightly, slightly off. It's very, very minor. So this is like total, like if you want to razor it's like me doing a painting and if i want razor sharp lines let me put some tape on the wall and make sure i spray that shit properly so you get that razor sharp line or you could do freehand that was really great as a freehand draw if you want the razor sharp line what i would do is make sure you kind of check in with that and you might need to just kind of like just slightly tap it to slow it down or slightly tap to speed it up you'll find me doing minor real minor course corrections where most people won't hear what's happening, but I'm hearing already the lag or the rush of the track starting to happen. So I'll just course correct. It's a very slight thing. So I don't think yep. there's anything wrong at all. I think that's just one thing if you want to work on now, because you really keep an eye on it. Yeah. You've, you've really got the concept of how to four deck mix now, because you're giving each deck space to breathe. Now, here's the interesting thing. Four deck mixes doesn't doesn't always mean there's four decks up at the same time, all with everything going on. You might literally just have a small little, you know, string or a little sound going in one just to add that little extra element. And what I like is you are learning not to layer for the sake of layering. Because yeah. sometimes we get caught up in the technicality and the showmanship of it. And that's great, but what's even more um, appreciated is when it's nuanced. You're starting to really get the nuancing at it and balancing the levels, which I'm very, very happy to see. So now it's sounding almost more like one track as opposed to yeah. four tracks trying to fight for attention and space. Yeah, it must make uh, musical sense, I guess is what you're saying. 
it, it makes musical sense, but it also makes sonic spatial sense, if that makes, if, if, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Whereas sometimes it's percussion that'll fight with each other when you're trying to layer, because one thing is, is you're hearing something in your head like, oh, this will be cool, but there's another frequency that's fighting for space. This is where the EQ really kind of helps you out. But sometimes it literally is two tracks doing, doing two different things that are taking up so much space that then you have to find the place on where to loop on which track so that you give each track space to breathe as a whole when yep. you're layering the fourth one. And I feel like you've really grown in that one with this. I, I tell you what I have picked up too, and I think, I think where I was watching it and I picked it up, it was very emphasized. I think you and Kristen did a, a set back to back and it was on YouTube. I think it was at the um, music conference in Amsterdam or something. And yeah. I watched yeah, the yeah. overhead, how you, yeah. And you guys were following the same kind of um, drops where you would, you would scroll to the, the eight yep. count drop before the track was going to go. Yeah. And then the transition was just a, a full bass whack. Yeah. And um, I'll, I'll show you. That's it. See, so it's that full drop into it. Exactly. Now, the reason we do that is this is kind of one of the things that I've been showing you and showing some of the other people in terms of how to create moments and and breakdowns and dramatic and dramatic tension and transition. It's always easier when you put yourself right next to the main section that's coming in. And I think we've kind of gone through this several times and this is what you what you saw Kristen and I doing. And it's funny because Kristen um, had her tech her own technique. She had already that in it. And then when she saw me playing, she started really um, honing what what she had already been doing with other like with hip hop and open format into the house sound. And what we discovered was when you're playing back to back with someone, <clears throat> if you're not <clears throat> if you're if you haven't done it before, um, or if you if you do it infrequently, in order to give each other room to breathe and to make the set to come together, we have to be able to, to cue each other on what's coming. So I would literally look at her deck, see that she was like one bar before. So whatever I was doing, I would transition it and then she'd be mixing in. And so that we would create these transitions. And what you just did was exactly that, especially when there's a breakdown coming and you have an exciting one bar drop, like, oh, you can keep looping that in and kind of slightly, you know, growing that in the mix. So it begins to sound like part of the track that's already playing. So once you get to that spot where the drop is going to happen, you just release the one you've been looping. That gives you that real dramatic punch that that yeah. really drops on the dance floor. And especially when you're tra when you're transitioning from one energy taking it up or taking it down, bringing in a completely different energy. Those are really, really useful. And I think yeah, you... also too, I, sorry, I, ha okay. I have noticed also too, um, when you do do that, mm -hmm. if it does stuff up, it's a major stuff up. If it Cause you know how sometimes you'll, you'll not get that eight spot on. It's got like a little two count before it. You know yeah. how some songs are not exactly on phrase and yeah, they get yeah. a little two count. And then it, yeah, I, I did that in the weekend. I did a set for um, 
Urban Essex Radio, which is Sean's radio station. And I, I've been hitting that drop all the time. And then I just tried it on a song, which obviously had a two count. And oh, my God, it was just the car crash. So what, just happened, going, oh my God. so what happens when that happens? So basically, you thought it was dropping on the one, but then there was like a one yeah. two count. You were, so you weren't I on the four. something form. wrong. So when that happens. Because sometimes you don't, yeah, sometimes yeah. you don't have that beat so, clear so, in that breakdown. So when that happens, let me see if I can find something that kind of illustrates the point. Uh, uh, let's see. So, so what, I, what I thought of is, is it, is it, is it worth putting a hot cue at the end? Shake it. Uh, here's what you could do, because you won't always have that hot cue available, especially if you're playing yep. a track that you never had a chance. So let's say we're, we're looping this. I'm just kind of off by would do when that kind of drops and you thought it was going to drop on the one but there isn't literally and this is where having a spiral delay is really useful you spiral delay shake it you make it seem like you meant to do that shit <laughs> so that's the cover up it's called I meant to do that yeah, yeah. As long but, as, I find as long as your your face doesn't tell. You, you, not only it's not, not it's not even just that your face doesn't tell. It's literally an attitude, because trust yeah. me, there was a point in my in, in, in kind of like in in my career where like if if I'd stuff a mix, I'd be like, ah, ah. Yeah. People look at me, they'd be like, oh, he messed up. <laughs> <laughs> he messed did up. Did you? Hey, did you ever? I gotta ask you a question. Mm -hmm. You must have done this. Did you ever, on the older models, eject the CD by mistake? Yeah. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Because I'm not the only one. I did it in a club with about 600 yeah, yeah. people. And I literally, as soon, and you know what it's like when it, it just goes yeah. dead. I literally yeah. went like this and made out it was the player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I picked the player up. And said, oh, the player. Yeah. And I, I, kept, I pretended to check the connections in the back. <laughs> and Listen, meanwhile, man. I slipped the CD back in. <laughs> One thing I have noticed is, is all in how cool you keep your head. There are going to be some things is you just got to put your head up and go, shit happens, yeah. dog. You know? I know? But what happens is like if you stuff a mix, you know, something slides out, you know, the delay didn't quite happen. You literally just go, mm, okay, and on to the next, keep it going. Most people won't know that you missed your mark. If you yeah. just continue to play through with the confidence, what you do is make a mental note. Okay, well, that that has an extra yeah. two beats I really need to pay attention to. And what happens to me sometimes is I'm, I'll am i think the track has analyzed properly and it's analyzed weird. So now it's not yeah. it's not analyzing on the one. I've got to go back in and reset the, 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 the cues. And where I'm looping it, it's now looping. Instead of looping on the one, it starts looping on the and. <clears throat> and all of a sudden my loop is just done now it's yeah. off time so what do i do that's when i when like if if, if i loop it let's say to the next track you know and i'll yeah, turn it yeah, into a snare roll i'll turn it into a snare roll yep. you could pretty much turn anything into a snare roll or a kick roll or whatever have you if it's yep. really stuffing up just keep your head in the game is probably yep. the yep. best way so okay that one didn't quite work and man what's happened to me on occasion is 
sometimes you'll just get that bad file that corrupts and it yeah, starts it doing white load loop. or it, it goes into emergency loop and the emergency loop is like half a bar the emergency yeah, loop will be space. like like uh it'll do that it's like, oh, oh. <laughs> it's like it's like oh really yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit hard to make out. There was a connection problem. <laughs> yeah, but like I mean, I've I've yeah, it's part of the process, really, isn't it? And do you know what? Also, too, Roger, it shows that you're playing live. You know, I mean, and, and here and, and here's the thing: because things will happen, and because we're not, you know, computers, and even computers crash. The beauty of it is you handle it with having fun, and that's yeah. literally like my motto: I handle it with having fun. I'm like, hey. I'm up here having fun. I'm entertaining you guys. Doesn't matter, you know, what I get paid or what I don't get paid, but I'm having fun here and I want you to guys have fun and things will happen. Transition on to the next. And it's funny, sometimes I'll get I'll go, okay, emergency exit effect. Right? So emergency exit effect would be like uh, keep that effect running, give me chance. To just, oh, it's gone, it's gone, oh, it's gone, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, and then. I have a dream. I meant to do that. <laughs> do you know, you know what, what another good one is? Another good one is like, um, if it cuts, I've been told one of the guys used to always say, oh, I'd just like to say congratulations. Jack's <laughs> birthday is here. Everyone say hello to Jack, it's yeah, his birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or sometimes, literally, it'll stop, and I'll, it'll just be like, let's say, this, this is a thing, and it'll just go. What's going on, everybody? How you feeling out there tonight? How you feeling? Put your hands up. You having a good time? Great. You know, I'm so happy to be here with you guys. You guys ready to hear some more house music? Yeah, let me say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be quick, eh? Hey? It's the pause that gives it away. It's like, it's, it's yeah. like literally, like, boom. How's everybody feeling out there tonight? <laughs> this is where it oh, really man. comes in handy, developing a good microphone personality. And, yeah, and the way yeah, you sure. do that is remembering that this literally is about having fun. You're playing music. Thankfully, you're not operating on an operating table. My brother, who's a DJ, is a surgeon. Now, he's had some serious situations happen to him. And I'm like, so... In comparison, when that happens, and then when, let's say, you stuff a mix in the club, he goes, bro, let me tell you something. <laughs> I could give a crap if I stuff up a mix. That mix is not going to kill anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Bad mix, I haven't heard of a person who's died of a bad mix yet. You know, just to put it into perspective. Different form of pressure, yeah. It, it, so it, I guess I guess as, as you get more mature and older, uh, it's almost like you get a bit more... Um, it's okay. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's that. I think when you're young, you take it more seriously, don't you? Yeah. It's not you, so much taking it seriously. You're a lot harder on yourself. Yeah, but it's not even so much taking it seriously. You also gain confidence because I take what I do very seriously, but I also still remember to have fun. See, it's you do a full circle. When you first start off, you're so excited. It's all about having fun. That is cool you know, rocking the decks, rocking people, whatever have you, then you get into the technicality and then you, you know, start trying to refine your craft and trying to make it look, you know, make it sound as cool as possible, learn the coolest tricks, try to figure out what the best tracks to play. And somewhere along the way, this happens to so many people. It's happened to me. You lose sight of why you started. You start mm. focusing too much on, am I getting booked? Uh, did, did these DJs say I suck? Do these guys think I'm cool? Am I playing the coolest stuff? Am I playing enough stuff? You know, am I playing the stuff that's getting everybody on the floor? Or am I, am I too cool for school and nobody dances? Or am I just playing pop records? There comes a point where you find your lane and your sound. And I'm thankful that I got to a place where not even bookings phase me. I don't care which club yeah. I play in the sense of, um, there are clubs I won't play because I'm like, that's just not me. But I am not concerned about the club that doesn't book me. Do I really give a shit if the Bergheim, if Bergheim calls me up and goes, hey, do you want to play next week? Not really. Cool if they that's do. That's so funny. I just found out about that club yesterday. 
Oh, I man. literally watched on YouTube. Is that the one in Germany? Yeah. And Berghain is not like... Not many people can get into? Not many people can get into. They're very selective of the DJs yeah. they put on. It's yeah. mostly techno. And it's like, oh, you're cool. Then cool if you play at that. And, and I'm not going to lie to you. There was a period of time when there were different versions of that. There was, you know, Sound Factory in New York, Paradise Garage going further back than that. You know, Ministry of Sound in London. All these iconic clubs. And you were cool if you were playing them or whatever. And I've been through those periods of my life. But I got to a place having, you know, thankfully, I've, I've had a measure of success. I've done well. But more importantly, I took the time to remember when I started, why I started, which was I had fun. And, and this is what I love doing. And these, these are the tracks I love playing. This was the sound I love. And I found my identity in that. When you get to that stage, then it becomes about wrapping yourself in your confidence. You know, you wrap yourself in your in your knowledge of who you are. And then you do things to forward your career that resonate with you. And you don't do things that don't resonate with you. And what that means is you're not worried about well, this club didn't book me or that promoter didn't book me. You work with the people that want to work with you and not worry about, like, there, there are some artists that I have on my label who are new or like, oh, they don't take me seriously. They haven't booked me. Why isn't this club, why isn't the promoter doesn't recognize how good I am? I'm like, you're worrying about the wrong things right now. Don't worry about who isn't booking you. Worry about, focus on, not worry, but focus on having fun and doing the best with what you were doing and building on that. The people that are going to book you are going to book you and you have to be patient to build it up. Perfect example, I'm doing NFTs and art and stuff like that. And I haven't sold any NFTs on any of these platforms. I just keep putting them out because I'm not worried about it. It'll come, but I'm learning the process. And while I'm learning the process, I'm getting ideas on how to further it. At some point in time, things will shift it to a certain place, but I'm not rushing it, you know? And I think that's the best the best way to do it when you're not rushing to try to catch up to anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, and absolutely. And, and I think I've, have you guys been delayed in your touring too? Not to yeah, no, the, sideways the, in the conversation, the, but is that true? Is that, is UK extended well, the, there? The UK is delayed until the end of, uh, I think July 21st now is when they're doing it. So right. the first three weeks of my UK tour have now been moved to later on in the summertime. So I'm basically, the okay. good thing is because America's open in certain places, I've just been like, okay, go on later to London, told my American agent, okay, there's some dates available so you can fill them now. And if not, I've got so much work to do with my, my next album and so on and so forth. I'm not concerned about it the way I used to be. And I figure- You seem to be out, like you've had Hmm? Sorry, I, I hate cutting you off. It sounds okay, like I'm okay. so rude. Um, but um, it, it seems to me that, you know, from following you, you know, the, through this kind of COVID journey, you've really embraced the downtime. Like a, a yeah. lot of people you can see have struggled yeah. with it. And, and you, you strike me as a kind of guy that just has to stay active. Got to be occupied there, doing something creative. There are different ways. Would that of be right being in saying? Occupied. Yeah, but there are different ways of being occupied and being creative. And the one thing that I hadn't had the opportunity to do for a long time is it, it's like I learned this in painting in, in doing graffiti and, and in painting, you have to step back and look at it sometimes to really get perspective on what you're doing and go, okay, maybe I could adjust this over here. Or maybe I could add this shade over there. It's the same thing with music and with my career. The downtime has been what makes me appreciate the work time. More importantly, the downtime allows me to have a human experience. And there are too many times when I've gone into robot mode. And that happens when you're on the treadmill of touring and nonstop and once city. And man, it's this, you know, there are people that it's taken out, you know. Yeah, I'd it's imagine. Re it's really, really affected some people to the point where they're, you know, they're, they're, they're gone. They left. They couldn't take it. And it's because they get on that, that hamster wheel and forget to step off and take that time for themselves and force it. You know, I, I, I literally was fortunate that I had a cutoff managers and different people and I restarted with a new team with a certain understanding. What I say goes in my personal time is the most important thing to me as being, as being a human, I'm a father, 
I'm a human, I'm, I'm a boyfriend and future husband or whatever, but I, you know, I'm a creative. So let's make it all fit so I can have a life. And I believe me, man, I spent many years not living, just kind of going, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I would, half your life would have been on a plane really, wouldn't it? Yeah. Quite a lot of it. <laughs> quite a yeah. lot of it. Racked up lots of miles. I Is there have, anything yeah. else you want to kind of touch on before we jump off? Um, I think personally, you're in a good place. And I think where you might want to think about to take things to the next level now that you've kind of gotten comfortable with giving space to each track. That's so important. And it's kind of one of those things that you it has to click in your brain. Like I could tell you a thousand times, but until it clicks in your head, when you hear things, ah, okay. And I think it's clicked. I think mm -hmm. what you might want to do is take some time to start thinking about the elements in each of these decks when you're playing to then start thinking a like, almost like a producer, it might wind up leading yeah. you to the path of production. You might wind up finding yourself in front of an Ableton um, program and, and coming up with some cool ideas. And that kind of naturally has its own progression and path. But what it will do is it will help you um, give your sets another layer of creativity and give it, wrap it in an overall sound. Because now mm. it's going to be about you setting your own tone, your own sound, your own kind of um, identity musically. We can all play the same tracks, but you can definitely tell who is playing depending on how they're playing it. So I think yeah. now you have the technique, you understand the technology. So now would be a good time to really start thinking about understanding the different elements, how you can layer the elements, but now finding your sound within that. Yeah, look, I mean, and like, thank you so much for all these lessons. <coughs> like I've just, I really, really have felt that, um, the big thing for me was the separation, like you say, the elements, the run up, the taking your time, the the creating time, the not rushing, and and the, the big one for me was overcooking it. Was was like you said, just because it's four decks, it doesn't mean that it's working. So I feel like I'm finding that balance, that right sweet spot, which I, I think it's the biggest thing out of all these lessons has really taught me, the sweet spot. I'm happy that you've kind of you found not only the value in the lessons, but more importantly for yourself, what works for you. And I think that yeah. all of these, all, all of these, um, these sessions that we've had, what I've been paying most attention to is, in terms of you, is how you have been coming to terms with what you're trying to do. So this is a psychological aspect to it, which then informs your performance. In the technical, in the in kind of like the pursuit of the technical excellence, which is important, uh, what a lot of people sometimes might wind up sacrificing along the way is the soul or the fun or the, or the, the kind of uh, identity. So I think you've gotten to a place technically where you can now refocus on your identity and obviously always having fun, but making sure that every set that you play, you could play on four decks. That's cool. Now you don't have to prove it to anybody. Now you can add yeah. it as you go. Because I think the big thing for a lot of people is like, look, I can play on four decks. These things aren't here just for show because there's a lot of people like, oh, what the hell has he got four decks for? He's playing two. Cool. You can play on four decks. You play it. You add those elements as you feel them and as they relate to what you're trying to achieve within your set. Because a lot of times I may have four decks going, but a lot of times I may just have two and then queuing things up. And so I'm using these decks in multiple dimensions in the sense of sometimes they're for layering, sometimes they're for setting up when I'm going to jump from one thing to another and create a certain kind of segment, you know? 
So for you, I think now that you've gotten, gotten comfortable with it, now learn to kind of back away from it and then use it as needed, as yep. feels right and vibes. Yeah, 100% understand you. Absolutely. Work ahead. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so for much, Roger. Time, Dean. It's, and I'm sorry we had the technical difficulties, but you know, I'm glad we were able to like we, get that time. And I'm going to bounce yep. this down now, and then I'm going to upload it probably by the next day or so, so you have it in your Dropbox. Awesome. Thank Good you so much, you. Roger. And I'll see you. And I think the next live stream I'm going to do, by the way, did you get a chance? To, you caught Twitch, the, the, this last one. The Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I caught yeah. it. But I actually, I had to, I missed the last hour because I had to go do my show for Urban Essex. It, it, it conflicted just at the tail end. But no, no, I caught most of it. Yeah, Twitch was actually, two hours. I think that's the right, the right move for me. Big, big, big difference in interaction and everything. Oh, huge, huge. Well, it's funny enough, just before you go, I had a DJ call me up who was a Ministry of Sound DJ. And you probably won't know him, but he's very, very big in Australia named John Course. And right. he was from Melbourne and he was on holiday here with his partner and Melbourne went to lockdown again. So uh. he rings me up and just says, Dean, I've, I'm on the Gold Coast. I, I don't know. I've never spoken. I thought it was a crank call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he rings me up and says, I heard you've got a streaming facility and I'd like to use it. So he rocks up. We got about 15,000 people Wicked. watching. Wicked. Yeah, we did it. We did a, um, we did it on Restream. So we did it on YouTube. We yep. did it on Facebook. We did it on Twitch. Brilliant. So all three. And what we found right was with Facebook, when it, because he had his um, laptop, I got a little stand here. He had his laptop and he went through the Restream bot. Now, when Facebook cut him, he just flicked it off and flicked it back on again. It reconnected. Yeah. So that was interesting. And I never knew that yeah. because we got about 2.3K on Twitch. Yeah. We got uh, 1.5 on YouTube. Nice. And YouTube never dropped him. And he was playing all Ministry of Soundtracks, which was yeah. interesting. But yeah. it cut it cut the actual upload two days after. Yeah. Twitch never dropped him. And we kept telling everyone to go on Twitch. Yeah. But we got some great numbers. Like it was really, really good. And that was on Twitch. Restring. It's 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 the way forward, but this is why like I've been tailoring my whole platform directive and now shifting everyone to Twitch, growing those numbers, but keeping kind of like the core people who want to see the you know because I'm not going to rebroadcast anything on Twitch that I that I yep. do live. That's just going to go straight to the Vimeo page. So this way, I don't yeah. have any any issues with them kind of muting anything. And this is where it it benefits having both. But they don't mute you when you're doing live. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, they don't. They don't. Well, unless they change that later on, but who knows? Ooh, anyway, mate, I've, 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 we'll see. I've got a jam, and I'm sure you're a busy man too. But thank you so much, Great Roger. That was wicked. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one. Awesome. You too.